Okay, so um, so Master Li had been imprisoned in China during the Cultural Revolution for eight years for teaching Qigong, and he was beaten and tortured every day for eight years. And he decided that he wanted me to be the lineage holder out of all of his students. And since I hadn't been in touch with him for four years, I was really confused as to why he wanted me to be the one. And I said, don't you have another granddaughter, grandson, great nephew, somebody else in your family? He said, no, you're the one. So I spent the next three weeks with him day in, day out, doing Qigong in his kitchen. It really upset me because I was forced to do something that was outside uh, my comfort zone. So then I went back home and then 90 days later to the day he died. And then I got a phone call from a son that I didn't even know that he had. And I was invited to the funeral and it turns out he had two sons and uh, one son had married a Jewish girl and they had a big falling out. Father and son had a falling out and the other son joined the communist party and it was his daughter that had come to visit, but then she was dead. So he said, don't let my family lineage die. I want you to be the one to carry it on. So I was not uh, flattered. I was, I was frustrated because I don't want to be the Qigong teacher because I had an active acupuncture practice. And I thought that's where my star was, was doing acupuncture. And then, um, but I continued to practice every day in Florida on the beach. And then uh, one day, uh, Master Lee just materialized in front of me. And I was like, oh my God, what's going on? So I'm like looking around, hoping somebody else will validate my experience. <laughs> and he said, why are not you teaching my Qigong? He said, don't forget, you must teach my Qigong. And then one day somebody in my building said, I'm a photographer, I've been watching you do Qigong. Uh, would you like some photographs? I'm like, bet. So he took the photographs and next thing you know, the book literally wrote itself. And then a few months later, a couple from Detroit were vacationing and they ended up doing Qigong with me every day. And then three months later, they call me on the phone and they say, we want to do a video of you. So they flew back at their own expense, shot the video, didn't charge me anything. And for the next six, seven years, that video was on Amazon. What I've done is speeded up the Qigong exercises because Qigong is very slow. It's methodical. It's very serious posture, you know. And the average American can't relate to that. It's like watching paint dry. So, um, so I, had a, uh, I had a couple of Tai Chi buddies. This uh, uh, one friend of mine, Diane, Diane Gold, she taught corporate Tai Chi and we were neighbors, so we would hang out. And then, and she was a DJ on the side. So she said, why don't we turn Qigong into a dance? And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> must be serious. And then a few months later, uh, some students of mine from Montreal who didn't know each other said, you know, it'd be really cool if you ended the class with a dance. And I'm like, ending the class with a dance, that's just crazy. And then a couple of months later, the, the, the lyrics came to me and I created a dance and we did that at the end of the class. Then I had a, a professor, um, theater professor at uh, FAU who was Italian. And she said, they didn't renew my contract. I want to continue my treatment, but I can't afford it. Is there something I can barter? And I said, well, what do you do? She said, well, I teach theater. I'm like, yeah, I, just what I need. 
So, <laughs> so she came to my class. She saw me do the Qigong. She says, I can help you make a video. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And she said, I know this really great guy, um, uh, Phoenix. And Lester also knows Phoenix. And I'm like, Phoenix, yeah. So I go to Phoenix with the, with the concept and Phoenix put the music to the dance. And then they made a video. And in 2012, 2012 it won a music video award. <laughs> so there's a lot of information that we need to bring out that is more than um, uh, that is more than martial, and that is medical, and that is spiritual. So anybody who studied uh, Shaolin, the the uh, the slogan of Shaolin is Chan Wu Yi. So Chan is Zen Buddhism. Wu is obviously martial arts, and Yi is medicine. Now the medicine is not to become a doctor, but to learn liniments and poultices and, and, um, and herbs to recover from injuries. So it's sort of like a self-healing, uh, herbal, herbal self-healing. motivation for martial arts isn't as strong as it was in China, but the Tai Chi, the push hands, the soft arts, there is a motivation for that because Americans suffer from anxiety, depression, um, fear, worry, suppressed anger. So we've got all these emotional, and there's no uh, socially acceptable way of balancing those emotions that cause us to bind up. And Tai Chi, push hands, the internal art of Qigong, all those things exist to help those problems. That's why I call it medical Qigong in my head. The muscles, the meridians, the points, the joints, the organs, everything made perfect sense. But it took 20 years to get to that point. Breath work is of critical importance. You can go 40 days without food, 14 days without water, but you can only go four minutes without air. And um, I don't know what type of breath work Aaron teaches. I'm sure it's really, really good. Um, but breath work controls the autonomic nervous system. Now, there's the, uh, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So the sympathetic is the accelerator. Oh my God, that guy almost ran me off the road. I'm gonna race up to him and uh. But then the parasympathetic says, it's okay. He was talking on his phone, relax. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> so Western medicine says, there's no difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic and you have no control over it anyway. But with breath work, you can develop the parasympathetic so you are less reactive. So there's one thing saying, oh, breath work is good. And there's another thing saying, breath work will keep you from getting into a bar fight <laughs> or a fight over a parking space or a fight over your insult to your girlfriend. <laughs> so so we, need, we need a reason why we do what we do. So breath work, number one, then meditation, number two, and then internal work, number three, and then external, number four, and then food, and then herbs, and then self-massage. So there's a, there's a laundry list of stuff. That's what, what I call preventive medicine, but it's actually Taoist healing practices.